Good morning and welcome to our services on today. What a mighty God we serve. And you know, God is good. God is faithful. Today as we end into our time of just some devotion with the Lord and family, hey, I want you to just connect with us today as we go before the Lord in prayer and but just a little worship and just let him know how much we appreciate him that we come this far by faith but but it's grace that brought us through and we just want to just pause and say we want to thank you Lord for the amazing grace that we experience every day of our life as old songwriters say it was grace that brought us saved us from and I don't know about you but it's grace that's going to lead us Every step of the way. Hallelujah. Why don't you join in with us? Amazing grace. How sweet does it sound that say someone like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. It was through me to dance, through me to dance. Just start and snare I have already climbed. Twas grace that brought me safe. you just lift your hands and let's just praise him and praise God 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 oh praise God Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you loved us so much. That you commended your love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We thank you this morning for bringing us into another Sunday morning. For we experience your grace. We experience your presence. We experience your power and your might. And today we acknowledge you as Lord over these services. Today that you will have your way. And that the word of the Lord have a free course in we thank you for all men and all those in authority. We pray for them that you will continue to guide them and give them wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your way and your plan and your purpose. That they will make the right decision. They will make wise decisions. Decisions that will improve our nation. And we thank you, Lord God, for the leadership of this ministry, our pastor and, and wife and the entire staff, Lord God. We hold them up before you. And we thank you for our church family, Breath of Life Christian Center. We pray for them that their faith will not fail. And Lord, as they are converted, they will strengthen their brother. And Lord, I pray that you will move in these service as you will for your glory and for your honor. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. We pass it on to you forever and ever. 
we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to another Sunday service. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Where two or three are gathered, he is in the midst of us, right? Amen. So we've come to praise and to worship his name. Yeah. So let's center in. Let's enter into his presence. Let's center in on him. Let's put our minds on the Lord God this morning, right? We're not gonna we're not gonna think about our problems or circumstances. We're gonna shake it all off. Hallelujah. For he is worthy of our praise, right? He is always worthy. No matter what's going on, God is worthy. Hallelujah. He is good and he's good all the time. So come and help us join us with that. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, just put your hands together. Help us with this. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. You are good, Lord. You are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Oh, Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah.
God. You're a good God. Hallelujah. You're a great God. You're a faithful God to us. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord God. So wherever we are right now, we lift our hands. We worship him. We worship you right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You know, many times we we worship we worship our circumstances. We worship our problems by worrying. But when we lift our hands and when we center in and when we focus in on God, we defy the work of the enemy. The Bible says that praise steals the enemy and the avenger. It, it confuses him when we purposely decide to praise him and to worship him. When we purposely decide to put our focus on him. Hallelujah. So we will lift our hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, help us join us, Chris. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Today, oh, we will lift up our voice in praise. Hallelujah. Declare that this morning. Today, oh, we will lift up our voice in praise. Today, oh, we will lift up our voice in praise. Wherever you are, just lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Today, oh, our voice in praise. Hallelujah. Listen to this part. There's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemy. It's your body, your blood you've shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, there's a table that you've prepared for me. In the presence of my enemy. It's your body, your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Through praise and worship. Come on, help us. This, this is, is how, how I fight, fight my battles. With my hands lifted, my heart lifted. This, this is, is how, how I fight my battles. Through praise and worship unto you, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. Focus in on him. This, this is, is how, how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded This is how I find, this is how I find, this is how I find. This is how I fight. 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 This is how I fight my battles. Through praise. Worship. This is how I fight my battles. This 
is how I fight my It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may, it may, it may look it may. like I'm surrounded, but I'm, I'm surrounded by you. And we call you waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, waymaker, miracle worker, Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing that with us. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who, so that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, who you are, that is who you are, that is who, so that is who you are. Holy that name. is who you are. That is who you are. So we sing, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. We reverence your holy name, God. We enter into the holy of holies, for there's none like you. In all the earth, in all the earth, we center our minds on you, Lord. We center our hearts on you, Lord. For we know there is none like you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We commit these services to you, Lord God. We thank you for allowing us to see another day. Hallelujah. And now if you may turn your attention to our announcements in the presence of the Most High God. Amen. Good morning, Breath of Life, and welcome to Bell News. Two options are available to request contribution statements. For the electronic option, visit our website, bolcc.org, 
click the contribution tab, scroll down to the bottom of the page and complete the requested information. Click submit when done. For the postal or pickup option, contact the accounting department at 901-383-5555 and provide the requested information. Sparkling Seniors, join us March 18th at 6.30 p.m. for a virtual COVID-19 vaccine Q&A. If you have any questions about the vaccine, this is a great time to ask. Please send your questions in advance to helps at bolcc.org by close of business on March 10th. Please note, this is informational only. We encourage you to consult your physician for any physical concerns you have. The baptism team will also meet via Zoom on Sunday, March 21st at 3 o'clock p.m. Please contact Hazel Webster for additional information. The nursery team's virtual meeting will be held Sunday, March 21st at 12 o'clock p.m. Please contact Rona Smith for additional information. BOLCC is hiring. We are looking for lead teachers full-time, campus aides full-time and part-time in our preschool department. Please send your resumes to personnel at bolcc.org. Hello, Breath of Life family, partners in holiness and friends. I am Addie Holloway and I have a few questions for you. Do you want to see our cities, our states and our nation healed? Do you want healing manifested in your body, your family members' body and your sisters and brothers in Christ? Do you want to see marriages restored and family relationships healed? Or do you want to see people saved and delivered and set free? Well, most of all, do you want to give the Lord delight and pleasure? He says that he delights in our prayers in Proverbs 15 and 8. Well, all of this can happen and more as we join together in continuous corporate prayer. We will begin our 24-hour, four-week prayer chain in accordance with James 5 and 16. And we're going to begin this on February the 21st and we'll run through March the 20th. You can be a link in that chain by selecting the times that you will commit to prayer. Our prayer times will be in 30-minute increments, and you can choose as many 30-minute increments as you like, and you can pray wherever you like. We will also be fasting on Wednesdays until noon to help break yokes. We are still adhering to the county's Safer at Home health order, so this will be personal prayer time in your prayer closet. Now, I would like for you to call the church. Let's get involved, everybody. Call the church at 901-373-7219 and give your name and the times that you will be praying. Also, you can send the information email at reset at bolcc.org. The Lord says that we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. He will forgive our sin and heal our land. He promised to supply all of our needs. The Lord is our shepherd and we don't have to want. He told us to pray without ceasing. He said to pray always and don't faint. So more prayer going to keep you from fainting and giving up. And then he says he delights in our prayer. Don't you want to give him delight? In Proverbs 15 and 8, he delights in our prayers. So family, friends, and partners, let's take God at his word. Let's join together. And pray, pray, pray. Call the church now. Give us your times, as many as you want. And uh, we're going to join together and see things happen as we pray. God bless you and we love you. That concludes Bell News. Have a blessed week, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. All right, it's offering time. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord some praise up in here, because again, it's good to be a giver. 
in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I want to use today uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 through 19, as I often tell a scripture for you today. And I'm going to do this out of the New Living Translation, so I want to just kind of share with us uh, just concerning our partnership with each other. And you all are partnership in our ministry. And this is for all of our partners and membership of this church. All those that support us in any form or any fashion, any way. It's just a message to you concerning our offering. And the Philippian 4.15 says, As you know, you Philippians, or you breath of life, okay, were the only ones who gave me financial help. When I first brought you the good news or the gospel, and then travel on to Macedonia. So what he was just saying to us that you guys are continuing to supporting us uh, in us continuing to sharing the gospel to the world. And y'all know the vision of this ministry is to bring back the bell. And we want to continue to preach that message of holiness around the world. And then he goes on and said, no other church did this. Even when I was with, uh, was in Thessalonica, you said once uh, sent help more than once and I don't I don't say this because I want a gift from you brother I want to receive a reward for your kindness and at the moment I have all I need and more I'm generously supplied with the gift you sent me with your Ephroditus and they are sweet smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and well-pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So again, he's just letting us know that as we continue to support the ministry, thank you all so much for your partnership and membership in supporting, especially during this pandemic time. We, we want to say we appreciate you guys and we don't take you guys for granted. As a matter of fact, we are here daily, here in the ministry, just most of the office staff. But we're here praying and interceding, doing our part, and we're still doing some form of counseling and things that we need to do around here to make things work and also our communication with the members. So we want to let you know we appreciate y'all continuous support in the ministry. So I want to pray for you now. Father, thank you as we receive our tithes and offering now into this ministry. We want to thank you for your faithfulness every day. We're so glad, Lord, that we're connected with you. And you said in your words, we bring our tithes and offering that you open the windows of heaven. And you pour us out blessing that there's not room enough to receive. And you rebuke the devour for our sake. And you cause the very earth to give to us. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. And Lord, we want to thank you for the faithfulness of the membership and the partnership of this ministry. And I pray, Lord God, a fresh grace upon them. I pray that you are supplying all of their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I pray that favor is upon them, Lord God. And I pray that doors of opportunities are opening for them. And I pray for their help. I pray for strength. I pray for great grace of encouragement to be upon them, Lord God. And our Lord, I just pray if any have any like that you are taking care of that need today. We just give you praise today as we worship you with our tithes and our offering. We give it willfully. We give it cheerfully. We sow it in love and we sow it in faith. And we honor your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. All right. Let's sow our tithes and offering. In Jesus' name, on the screen is the ways and means in which you can give into the ministry. Thank you so much, and be blessed. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another Lord's Day and praise the Lord for all that's going forth before. But I know you are excited about today. I know I am. And I'm so glad, so glad to be here and really so glad to see you in the spirit realm. 
I don't see you physically, but I know you're there. And I just want to thank God for everyone that's tuned in this morning. Thank God for another Lord's Day. Amen. How many happy about today being the Lord's Day? Amen. Our God is good, and I tell you, he's been good to us. So I'm just uh, here today. I have something to share with you from the Lord. And I want everybody to get ready. I want you to let somebody else know that we're on. And I want you to uh, share the message with others. And more than anything else, I want you to keep it and take it to heart. And know that our God is a great God. And he is still doing great things. And regardless of what's going on around us, our God is expe expecting us to continue on this road, continue on doing what he's called us to do. And you know what? We're going to do it. Amen? We are going to do it. So I just praise the Lord. I'm going to pray. And uh, just before, before I pray, I do want to let you know, Breath of Life family and all those that are a part of this family, all the members and friends and all of our partners, we want to let you know that we love you. And we do miss you. I'm so uh, excited about when we're going to get back together inside the building. We miss you. And you know, we didn't realize, I didn't realize, and, and probably you didn't either, what a blessing it was when we were able to come together and assemble together and just to be able to look at each other, be able to smile at each other and hug and hear the voices of one another. And you know what? I thank God that that will be coming again soon. And we will get in here. When we get back in this house, we're going to be rejoicing and praising the Lord. So Lord, know that we, uh, Pastor Holloway and I, we love you all and we miss you. And, uh, and we just want to uh, encourage you in the Lord and let you know that God is still with us. God is on our side. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to get right on into what we have for today. And I guess you're wondering, what's she doing with those shades on? <laughs> Well, when I begin to share what we're going to have for you today, you'll know what it's all about. Amen. So let's just bow our heads. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you and we love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. It ain't nobody like you, Lord. You are the only true God. And we are just so glad to be yours, to be members of your household, to be your sons and your daughters. We're the sons and the daughter of you, the most high God. And we are grateful for that. And Father, I just uh, lift up everyone in our audience today. I lift up all the family. And I pray, Lord God, that you will uh, just continue to meet every need. We thank you today as you send your word, Father, that the word that you send will prosper in what you send it to do. It will accomplish your purpose. It will accomplish your will. And we thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that there is healing in your word. Hallelujah. There's deliverance, Lord, in your word. And we thank you, Lord, that your word, you say you, you uh, sent your word and healed us and delivered us from our destruction. And then you said the word to sanctify, to for us to sanctify ourselves, sanctify ourselves through the word. So we thank you today that we will be the better when we hear the word. We will receive it, Lord God, for cleansing. We'll receive it for healing. We'll receive it for revelation. We'll receive it that we can go forth in victory and be all that you call us to be. Oh, how we bless you, Lord God, and how we love you. And we just thank you for every family, every person. And we thank you, Lord, for what your word will accomplish in each heart today. Today, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Hallelujah. All right, everybody, well, I want to tell you today we want to challenge you we want to challenge you today i want to i want you to be reminded that is nothing that can stop you from a forward progress nothing that can stop you if you don't allow it to stop you god has fixed it where we can be victorious in this earth he's fixed it that we can carry out his will and that we can fulfill his purpose and his plan and so today i'm going to be sharing uh, from the subject you're the victor. You're the victor. That victor is B-I-C-T-O-R, and victor means winner in the battle. So I don't want you to forget that. 
You are the victor. You win. It said you're the winner in the battle. And since you are the victor, we want you to refocus and run. Let's say that together. I'm the victor. So I'll refocus and run. All right. Amen. So I want to read a scripture to you, and that's why I have these shades on. You know, sometimes uh, you can see a little bit, uh, uh, but you can't see as clearly so with these shades on sometimes. But I'm taking them off because we're going to be talking about refocusing and running this race that God has put before us. We want to win. You know, this thing is all about God. It's all about his purpose, his will. He created us for his own divine purpose. So we're going to look here in Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verses 1 through 2. We want to start out there. And I want you to remember, you're not the victor, but you're the victorious one. You're the victor. And as we read and share today, let's set ourselves to refocus and run this race with patience. And Hebrews 12 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, I'm reading from the King James, and then I'm going to read it out of the New, in the ba New American Standard. So it says, since we are com also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. How are we going to do that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand at the throne of God. So we see that according to this word, Jesus was victorious and we are victorious. So we want to remember that and I want you to, and I want you to uh, look at that and, and let's have that in the New American Standard. As we're talking about you're the victor, you win. And as you refocus and run this race that God has set before you. In the, uh, in the uh, New American Standard, this same scripture says, therefore, now that therefore was dealing with all that was in Hebrews chapter 11. All that had gone before was the word letting us know how people had won the victory through all kinds of circumstances, all kinds of situations. They won the victory because they were focused on what God said to do, because they were determined to obey God, and because they were willing to act in faith and take their faith and get the results that was necessary. When you back up and look at uh, Hebrews 11, uh, we can see that it said uh, that by faith Enoch was translated. This man was uh, walking in the earth, pleasing God, and God just took him. He was walking with the Lord, and then one day they just went straight on to heaven. Well, it was a faith walk. That was by faith. And as we remember that we're victorious in all that's been going around here, we want to know that we can win. We win by operating in faith. And then we talk about how by faith Noah. Noah was warned of God about what was to come, and Noah built the ark. The Lord told him it was going to rain. The man never saw rain before in his life. He didn't know what rain was, but the Lord said, it's going to rain and build an ark for the saving of those that will come in. So by faith, he moved building an ark and going about uh, doing, uh, getting all the animals and everything God told him to do. He was able to accomplish that. He was able to continue on and do it in the midst of folk talking about him and folks making fun of him and folks talking about rain. It ain't going to rain and they were going on doing what they want to do. But by faith, he was able to accomplish what God told him to do. So we are focused on what God said for us to do as an individual, as a family, as a church. We can get it accomplished as we focus on what the Word says, as we look at what the Word of God says specifically for us and generally for us. And as you go on, Abraham by faith, he was able to offer up his son. Uh, well, he was told to offer up Abraham, uh, Isaac, and he was willing to do it because he trusted God. He believed God. And all through uh, Hebrews 11, we were here seeing all that was ac accomplished by faith. And then the word said, as we were compassed about it, we need to uh, take that example to heart. So I want to go on and read that again in the uh, New American Standard. It says, therefore, 
Since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance this race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So as we're sharing today, I want to encourage you, I want to remind you that even though we've had a lot to hinder us, we're still going to go forth and accomplish the purposes of God. You know, the devil brings a lot of things, a lot of things come our way to stop us. The enemy, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But you know, God says that we win, and he tells us that we are victorious, and he tells us to to go forth and do what he's called us to do. So I want, to, uh, I want you to remember, remember, we've come through some tough times in this country, all over the world. We've uh, been, uh, uh, come, uh, pa uh, uh, the, ac the pandemic that's going on, the coronavirus that's going on. And all of that, you know, in the midst of that, it's meant for us to slow down on God, to, to, to take our sight off the Lord, to, re to be just surviving. But we got to remember that we are the winners in this earth, that God put us here to be victorious over everything. He put, he put Adam and Eve in the earth. He said, I want you to rule and reign and have dominion. So the Lord still wants us to have dominion over every circumstance and every situation because he's given us the job to do and we can do it. So we're going to be determined that we're not going to let the enemy hinder us, stop us from going forth. Stop us from doing what God said to do. So that's why when we read this uh, in Habakkuk, we're going to be taught, we'll remind ourselves of what we as this breath of life family have been called to do. And what we as a people have been called to do. And what we as an individual, each individual, you've been called to a great calling, and that is the calling of holiness. So we want to remind you, we want to tell you that you can make it, that you win, that you're the victor. You're victorious over everything that the enemy tried to bring your way because the Lord calls us to triumph. He give us the victory. So as we, I want you to refocus. And like I had the shades on at first, sometimes we, when everything is going around us, our, our, our sight, we might, things might be a little dim, but you know what? When you go to the Word and remind yourself every day of what the Word says and what you're about, then you refocus on what God said. And that'll keep you going. That'll keep you fighting. That'll keep you in the, in the battle because you're determined to please and obey God. And we as an individual, as a, as a person, be determined to please and obey God. I want to, uh, you know, 2020 came through, uh, a lot happened, but let's get some 2020 vision from that. Let's remind ourselves of the vision that God has called us to as saints, that God has called us to as a family, that God has called us to at this Breath of Life family. You may not be a part of Breath of Life, but whatever church you're a part of, your pastor has given you a vision. So let's look at this in Habakkuk as we're talking about being victorious, how we need to refocus and run. So let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2. And we want to go to verses 1 through 3 in Habakkuk. Because, you know, this calling in the Lord is a high calling. And this thing is about to wind up. And we need to recognize that the time is drawing nigh. And we got to get everybody in we can into the family of God. And then we got to focus on what our individual uh, pursuits are, and the things that God has called us to do as saints and things that is, he's called each one of us uh, to a, a gift or, or, a, or something that we're to carry out in the body of Christ. We all are supplying a joint from, and, and we want to supply that joint in a great and a mighty way. So here in the back of chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. It says, uh, I will stand on my guard. I'm reading out of the, uh, I'm going to start out of King James, but then I want to read out of the New American Standard as well. It says, I will stand upon, out of the King James, King James, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And, the Lord, and so as we talk about this, are you on your watch? Are you doing what God called you to do? Are you carrying out the vision that he's put in your heart? Are you carrying out the calling that he has on your life? 
You know that we as, as people of God, he's called all of us as saints to be holy. He said, be holy for I am holy. And whether you're at this church or another church or somewhere else in the world, God said, if you're a Christian, if you're a saint, be holy for I am holy. So regardless of what's going on around us, no matter whether it's a pandemic where you're at home and not able to get into the church building, you know what? God is in you and God's word is in you. And the thing that God has called you to do is in you and in this word that we have with us every day. And so we want to focus on that and know what he's called us to do and do it. Here he says, uh, the hero back was talking about he's going to stand on his watch and he's going to see. And sometimes as things happen in our life, we might miss it. We might get reproved from God. But what we want to do is go forth and, uh, you know, repent, get it right and go on with God. But he said, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is for an appointed time. We hear the Lord has an appointed time. He's given us to bring back the bell of holiness. He's given us to take it all over the world. And you know, in taking it all over the world, you want to start it right where you are, in your own home, in your own community, in your own church. And the Lord says, be holy, for I am holy. Now, as this thing that has come to the, this country, the, the pandemic or the COVID-19, you know what? None of that is greater than the Lord. So we want to remember that even though uh, we may not, you may not be having services in your church, you may be having, but still the service is good. The Lord has fixed that we got services on the, on the internet, on YouTube, on Facebook, and, and you know, you're streaming everywhere. So you still need to get the word. You need to still get into your services. And even more now, get more into whatever's online. If you got Bible studies on there, get into Bible studies. If you got uh, uh, prayer meetings, get into prayer meetings. If you got some kind of group, some of you may have something like Sunday school, or you may have, like we have in this area, Connect 19. Get involved in those things. Because the vision that God has called us to at this church and the vision is, is bring back the bell of holiness. So we want to be about holiness. We want, to, we want to live a holy life. We want to operate as God said do. So as I say, have a clear vision of what he called you to do and do it. And uh, let's go on and look here. We want to look at a scripture here. As I said, we have challenges. We may be the enemy want to come to hinder you, but you're not going to let any hindrance stop you. You're not going to stop. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. I want you to be reminded of what he's called you to do as an individual. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Hallelujah. We're, you are the victorious one, and you're going to be victorious in the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 14 said, Now thanks be unto God, which also causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest to save of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. And then when you read that in the, let's look at that in the New American Standard. New American Standard say, but thanks be unto God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through a sweet, a sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. So remember, as we're going through the things that are happening out in this area, dealing with the pandemic, we want to focus on the word. Focus on our purpose. Focus on the calling that God has on our lives. And we want to make sure that we're doing that. We want to make sure that we take every opportunity to live holy, every opportunity to share our faith, every opportunity to bring somebody into the family because time doesn't stop. God called us to call you to live the holy life. God called you to be an example. Then you, don't, you want to focus on that. And you want to know that regardless of what's happening in this earth, it's not going to stop me and hinder me from being, living a saved life. It's not going to stop me and hinder, hinder me from carrying out 
whatever God has put me in the earth to do because we're in a body and you have a purpose. You know, you can, you, it's so wonderful how the Lord will give you ideas that you can continue on being a witness, continue on living a holy life, and then drawing others unto you, especially during a time like this, because a lot of people are looking for answers. A lot of people know that they need somebody to help them greater than themselves. They need the Lord on their side. So we need to remember as believers, we're, we're the victorious one, and we're going to refocus and run. We're going to extend our and expand our energy on being God's person, on doing what he says in the earth on living life that pleases him and winning others to this family of God. You should be a sweet smelling savor of the Lord. Your, your life should be a fragrance of God. And even though we're not in the, you may not be around all the people you used to be at before all this came about from 2020 and, and everything that's going on with the pandemic, don't you know what God has delivered us? He's given us the victory. He gave us power in our words. And as you continue to speak to coronavirus, as you continue to speak to the pandemic, and you focus on being about the business of the Father, be like Jesus when he was a little boy. Even as a child, he was concerned about carrying out the will of the Father and pleasing him. So as we know that we win, we're victorious. And, and we're going to focus on the vision of holy living, bringing back the bell of holiness and doing what God has called you to do. So as an individual, we know that he's given all of us uh, a ministry, a ministry of reconciliation. So how much, think about your, you think about your life. How much are you about causing others to be reconciled unto the Lord? How much is that on your mind, causing others to be reconciled unto the Lord? We're going to look at a few examples how the disciples, when the Lord had given them the, the, what he wanted them to do, how so much came up against them. They kind of got off some of them. They started, re they, they didn't maintain the focus on the purpose that they were in the earth, the purpose for their salvation, the purpose for them being here. So we want to maintain focus and do that thing every day that God has called us to do to walk in that vocation of a holy life, walk in that vocation of bringing others unto him and being a soul winner, walking in the vocation of holy living. So uh, know that he's the one that causes us to triumph. He's the one that gives us the victory, and we have victory in Jesus. So we can focus on the word, and you know what? The word is what we need to focus on because the Bible said heaven and earth will pass away. The pandemic will pass away, everything. But the word will stand forever. So when you got the word in your heart, you're doing the word, you're focusing on the word, you stand. You will make it. And then Jesus, when he prayed, he said, Lord, he, he prayed for us to be, to be the winners and to, and to be overcomers. So remember, you're the victorious one. You're the victor. So refocus and run this race with patience. I want you to look at... Um, uh, first, uh, first Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57. Every day, remember, you're here for a purpose. You're here to bring back the bell of holiness. You're here to live a holy life. You're here to win somebody to Jesus. So let nothing hinder you. Let nothing stop you. Stop you. Yeah, the pandemic came to hinder you. But you know what? COVID-19 is cursed and cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. And we can go on knowing that we're winning. Oh, you know, we win in this earth. We're victorious. Here in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57 tells us here, But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in what? The work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. So, so uh, saints, uh, believers, church, remember, you're the victor. You win. So know that as, as, as the Lord said, we, can, we got the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we want to focus on what God said to do, what God uh, has called us to, to, to accomplish in the earth. And don't let... Open your mouth and come against the COVID-19, come against the pandemic. But remember, 
God got you here for a divine purpose to accomplish his will in the earth. And you set yourself to do it. You know what? Even though, you know, some of us, we haven't, you know, come into church strengthens you. And so we haven't been in the church building, but we've been, we haven't been in the church building. But you know what? We have to refocus on the word and what God called us to do and be strengthened in that. Because even though we're not together in the building, we're together when we're, when we're online, we're together when we're praying together on the prayer lines, you're together when you have services online and get the word online. And you want to know, you want to be strengthened so that the enemy won't trip you up and take you out. Uh, since we are not together physically, we can know that God is with us and we win in life and that we win over the enemy and we win over sin. And we do that by continuing to apply the word every day of our lives. I want you to look at something here. We have some examples in the word how the disciples, God had given them the word and told them what he wanted them to do. And then they got sidetracked. So we want to learn from those examples. Don't get sidetracked. Don't know that you are here for God's purposes. And you are here to live a saved life. You are here to win others to the Lord. And so as a person, you want, to, you want to refocus on what God called you to do and be about doing it. As a family, you want to refocus on what God called your family to do. You know, he might have called you to start a business. Then you want to refocus and know that my business win. I'm going to apply the principles of God. I'm going to speak the word over my company. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to increase during the time of the pandemic. I'm going to overcome during the time of the pandemic. I'm going to be about supplying needs during the time because God gave me this vision. God called me to this job. God called me to this company, and I'm going to carry it out. So what we want to remind you is don't let anything stop you and hinder you from pleasing God, from pleasing the Lord and accomplishing the will of God in this earth. Uh, let's look at some examples of, you know, God, when he, uh, look at John 21. Jesus had given the apostles the word and had told them, uh, told them to go and, 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 and teach and go and make disciples. He called Peter. Peter was in a, a fishing business. They were fishermen, but God called him and said, look, I want to make you a fisher of men. Don't you know God has called you to be a fisher of men? And look here in John 21. Peter, the Lord had told them to go and, and, uh, and, and be fishers of men. And uh, during the time that after he was crucified and, and, uh, and, and they just seemed like all hope was gone. But you know what? God's word stands forever. And he was expecting them to continue to go forth and make disciples. He was expecting them to continue to do what he called them to do. And so let's look here in John 21. When he, was, when he died and rose again, uh, and he was seen of them a few days, he had told uh, them to go and receive the Holy Ghost. But that, they, 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 they were to go and receive the Holy Ghost, but they were supposed to, after that, he, they were supposed to go forth and make disciples. Go forth and win people to the Lord. And here in John 21, verse 1 through 11, it said, this was after he died. You know, they were all just, just seeming like hopeless. And you know what? We don't want to ever get hopeless because God is, still, God is still victorious through us. God is still on our side. God is still with us. And we can accomplish his purpose because he's still with us. His word is with us. His spirit is in us. So here... They were here uh, after Jesus had, uh, it says in uh, 21, say after these things, J Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There was together Simon Peter, Thomas called Did Denimus, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of the disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. Now, Jesus had called Simon, Peter, he had called all of them, and he had given them to be fishers of men. He had told them to go forth and make disciples. And after, the, after, the, after he was crucified, they were still supposed to continue on doing what God told them to do. 
He had called them from, from the fishing business into becoming fishers of men. But what happened? It was something that came, Jesus was crucified, and they felt like that was the end. But God had already told them that he was going to be, he was going to raise, he would be risen again. But yet, Peter and all these other disciples that followed him were out there fishing. And not fishing for souls, but fishing for fish. And God had to remind them and let them know, I've called you to be a fisher of men, so you feed my sheep. What he was telling them, don't let anything stop you from the calling, stop you from what I put you in the earth to do. Don't you let disappointments, don't you let pandemics, don't you let COVID-19, don't you let a bad relationship, nothing stop you from pleasing God and carrying out the vision that he's put you in the earth for. Somebody's watching you. Somebody needs you to stand strong and accomplish what God put you in the earth to do. You are a witness of Jesus Christ. So regardless of what's going on, don't let it hinder you and stop you from still being a sold-out Christian, being a sold-out person that will be about the Father's business to, to win people to the Lord, to carry out that ministry of reconciliation. And he's given every one of us a gifting, a calling, and we need to walk in those callings, and we need to enhance them. We need to get stronger. We need to know that don't care what's happening in the earth, God has a call on our lives, and we want to carry out that call. We want to focus on what is God calling for me to do this day? Uh, one day at a time, pleasing him, fulfilling purpose, carrying out the plan. Remember the vision that he's given you, the vision of being a soul winner, the vision of reconciling others. Whatever gift and talent he's given you, use it to be a blessing to others. We know that Jesus, uh, he went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Well, don't you know what? God still got that for us. He we're, we're Jesus in the earth. We're the body of Christ in the earth. So we want to go about doing good and, he, and, and healing all that's suppressed of the enemy. We want to go about doing good, winning others unto the Lord and being focused on why we are here and what God has called us to do. We need to be reminded and know that God is with us. Even as a church, we focus on what God told us to do. As a vision, we're to carry holiness all over the world. Well, the pandemic shouldn't stop us from doing that. Now, we know we had to follow the guidelines of, of uh, those that were given us so that people would, would, would live and not die because of the, the uh, COVID-19. But you know what? That doesn't stop us from carrying the word. We got telephones. We got, uh, we've got uh, iPads. We got all those things where we can... We can call people and encourage them in the Lord. We can call people and win them to the Lord. We don't want to let anything stop us from the main thing that we're about. God told us in the, uh, here at the church, we've got uh, connect groups. Don't you know there are things that we have uh, that as you are, be a part of it, and in whatever church you're a part of, be, if they got Bible studies online, if they got telephone uh, sessions online get involved be a part of it know that you are here for god's purpose you are here to bring forth to others who jesus is he said we're here to make disciples so we want to be about doing that so we see where uh peter got off and we don't want to get off from what god has put us in the earth to do but jesus put him back on track he talked to him he fed him he told him he told peter said I want you to feed my sheep and feed my lamb. I want you to go forth and do what I call you to do. Don't go back to your old ways. You know what? Since some of us have been out of church, you may have been tempted to get into your old ways. Don't do, we don't want to do that. You know, don't go back to the old group that you used to be with before you got saved. Don't go back to your old ways that you were involved in before you became a part of the family of God. What you want to do is increase in the Lord. You want to become stronger. You want to draw closer to him. He said, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. So I want to encourage us. Let's wake up. Let's realize that time is drawing nigh, and we want to fulfill God's purpose for us in the earth. We want to carry out his will. And you know what? If you're determined to please God, that's going to help you. It's going to help you to live right. 
It's going to help you to make disciples. It's going to help you to walk in whatever giftings or talents and abilities he's given you. Use them for the betterment of people. You know, God put us here not only to be, a, to be blessed, but he said to be a blessing to the families of the earth. So this is, uh, this is really close. This is time for us to, to shake ourselves and for us to wake up, awake to righteousness and realize even things are happening around us, but you know we're going to use our word, our voices, our, we're going to use the word and come against any obstacle, anything that will hinder us, whether it's a COVID or whatever, we're going to come against it with the word, but we're going to please God. We want to fulfill purpose. We want to be focused and remember that we are victorious and we are here for God's purposes. We are here to carry out his will. So don't go back to any of your old ways. You know, the, in, in Proverbs, it's talk about the dog that returned to a vomit. Don't return to you. Don't go back to your old ways. You want to go forth stronger in the Lord. You want to go forth being, uh, being determined to be the blessing that he's called you to be in the earth. There's another example of things that hindered the saints of God, the people of God, the church of God, and that's in Acts chapter 8. This is an example of where the Lord had told us to go, told them to go forth and to, to make disciples and lay hands on the sick so the sick can recover. He had just given us a, a mission in Mark 16. They had a, the saints had a mission. You know, saints as individuals, as families, as church, we got a mission. We got a mission to please God. We got a mission. Let me read that here in Mark 16. We want to remember, and then we're going to go to Acts. I didn't give you Mark, but here, we, we got time to get it. Because we want to know that if we're focused on what God says and we're determined to carry it out, that's going to help us to be the overcomers that we should be. In Mark's, uh, Mark 16, it says here, verse, uh, verse 14. This is after Jesus. They say after what he appeared, I'm talking about Jesus. This was after he was crucified and after he rose again. It said he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. And he upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believed that is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's the great commission. That's for every believer. And that's for everyone that's a part of the church. We're to be getting folks saved and getting them back and getting them into the family. So even COVID might be there, but you know, you got power in your word. Speak to it. Curse it. Every time you think curse it, and it's calling it dead and cast into the sea. And then thank God for medicine. He said, it's healing. It's a bomb in Gilead. He's putting healing in medicine. How the Lord, people are getting vaccinated. All of that. But you know, regardless of what is happening, we still got a commission before the Lord. And he said here, Go into all the world, and you may say, well, I, 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 what, what you mean go into all the world? Your world, wherever your world is, your home, your community, your church, your family. You know, we can get on the line and call family members. But, you know, let's just get, just get, get our mind filled with why we're in the earth. And we're the earth, in the earth for God's purposes. And we set to do what he said. And you'll overcome whatever circumstance you got, because by faith, you're going for it to please God and to do his word. And, and the, the body of Christ, the church here, we've been called. Uh, now, I told you to, uh, let's, we were going to text, uh, Acts chapter 8. Let's look at Acts chapter 8. You know, that was things that was obstacles for the saints back then. And it's obstacles, but they're not going to stop us. And we don't, and, and make up your mind, you're not going to let it hinder you. Because God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And we know that uh, things, you know, you have challenges. Some of you may have lost your job, lost a job. Some of you may uh, have been laid off from work. Uh, 
You got bills coming and you don't, you got more bills and money. But you know what? You got a God that gives you favor. You got a God that gives you wisdom. You got a God that's on your side. And those things that he's promised you, he'll do it if you're a tither. Know that he says that he'll open the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, you won't have room to receive. Call on him when you got those needs and bills that need to be paid and things that need to, uh, people that are sick in your family that need healing. Call on what the word says. Make a demand on God's word and see God manifest in your life. Here in Acts chapter 8 and verse 1, the, the Lord had, uh, this was after Jesus had gone back, but this is during a time where the church was being persecuted. And, uh, you know, at first they said, Jesus, we thought you were going to uh, give us the kingdom right now. They was looking at him to just over, overpower the others and, and Israel be made the rulers again. But in a way, uh, after Jesus went back, they still were after the folk that were these Christian folk. And there was a lot of persecution of the church. Here in Acts chapter 8, and verse 1, it says, Saul was consenting unto death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. And then when you go down to verse 4, see, this was, that was a hindrance to the church, just like we got a hindrance now. But we don't let it stop us. We don't let us quit us from doing what God said to do. We go forth in whatever vision God has given you. He may have called you to be a prophet. He may have called you to be a, a teacher. He may have called you to, to be a, the one that minister to the older people. Whatever he's called you to do, no, he don't want you to let what's going on in the earth stop you. He wants you to speak to whatever's going on that's coming against you. He wants you to uh, take the word and, 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 and annihilate whatever's in your way and carry out his will, carry out his purpose. So these people were being persecuted where the Lord had told them to go into all the world, but they were hoovered up and they were communing and everybody won, uh, uh, acting as one in Jerusalem. But he wanted them to take the word out. Well, you know what? He wants us to take the word. He wants us to get the, the message of holiness all over the world. He wants you to live a holy life and bring people, like other folk, into the family of God. And just know that you're, you're the victor. You win if you'll just apply his word, believe what he's saying, act on this word. So refocus. Like I came in here with these shades on. Sometimes things that's going on that COVID-19 might have got us kind of a, a little... Not, not really focus on what God said, but we're going to focus on what God said and know that he said, go into all the world. Know that he said, walk in the gifts and talents that he's given us. He said, make disciples. He said, be a soul winner. And he said, tell others about him. Tell others about this highway of holiness that you live in. Tell others about how God wants them in his family. Win them to Jesus. This is an hour. This is an hour really for us to be bringing in the harvest. It's harvest time. It's time for us to be bringing people into the family of God and realize and know that God has given us power in our words, power to, to, to cause, to, to come against the, uh, the tactics of Satan, power to win in the earth. And so here, those apostles, those, uh, he called the saints to go and take the word, take the word. And they were all together. But you know, persecution came and they went out preaching everywhere. Even Philip, Philip was a deacon, but Philip was one of the uh, men that had gone and uh, the Lord had, uh, he went and preached. He went down to, I think it was Samaria. And he went there and he, yeah, he preached the kingdom of God and folk was getting saved and getting baptized and the, the people in Jerusalem, they said, we gotta go see what Philip doing. So Philip was one though, even though there was persecution all around, he went to this area and he brought Jesus and the folk was getting baptized. They got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I mean, they was having a high time. But then the Lord told Philip, Philip was being obedient, told him to go, he had to go to another area, end up having to go and preach to an Ethiopian eunuch that needed to know about God, needed to know about salvation. He needed some understanding. So there's some people out there that's waiting on you to come with some understanding, waiting on you to come and preach Jesus to them, waiting on you to come and show them a holy life. God is calling us at this hour to go forth and carry out the mission, carry out the vision, do what he's called you to do so that we can bring in the sheep, so we can get the harvest in. And then we have it. So you have that example. You can look at it in Acts 8 and see how 
uh, Philip, and uh, they just, they, and, and then as they were being persecuted, they went on and was doing what God told them to do. But we don't want stuff to have to come to push us, even though it, it was good that they went on and obeyed God. But we need to take it on ourselves to know, I still got to please God. I, got, I still got to work to do. I still got to carry out the vision that God has given me. And we'll carry it out as, uh, as he would have us to. Thank God that we can get wisdom from him and direction as to what to do and how to do and carry it forward. And if you want to, if you will, read 1 Samuel chapter 17. We won't have time now in verse 25. And you have an example of a person that didn't let COVID-19, didn't let what was going on with David, and when didn't let the giant stop God's, for, to stop his forward move in the Lord. This Goliath was, was trying to defeat the armies of God. And David said, who is this uncircumcised giant? That's what we just said about this COVID-19. Who is this uncircumcised? Who, what is this thing? This trying to stop the church, trying to stop the believer, trying to stop us from witnesses, trying to stop us from going forth in the Lord. So we need to use wisdom and carry out the, the whatever guidelines you need to follow. But you know what? You got a mouth, and you can open your mouth if you got to get on the phone, if you got to get on the Facebook, if you got to get on Messenger. You can tell people about the Lord and refocus and run this race with patience. He said, if you got the vision, God gave you a vision, run with it and carry it out. Amen? All right, well, we're going to have to close it out. I got much more I can say about that, but I want you to... Those scriptures that I gave you, Habakkuk 2, Hebrews 12, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians. You get, in Romans 8, get these and meditate on them and know that you are victorious. Refocus on what you've been called to do as a believer, what you've been called to do as a family, what you've been called to do as a church. And let's carry out the vision that God has called us to do. Let's run with the vision and let no hindrance stop you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, praise the Lord. We're going to uh, extend some invitations to you. We thank God for you. Thank God for the word. But I want to, right now, I want to ask you to close your eyes, and we're going to extend some invitations to you to, uh, to receive Jesus today. So you've heard the word, and you know that God has a plan for you. He has a vision for you. He wants us to run with the vision. And you may not be a Christian. You may be hearing you heard the word, and you're running, what, she, what is this all about? And you want to know about it. You want to come into this family of God. Well, I want you to know that God wants you in this family. Jesus, the word said that he wants all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. So I want you to uh, just bow your heads where you are, and I want you to uh, repeat after me. I want to lead you in a prayer where you can come into the great family of God where you can carry out the vision, the purpose that God put you in the earth for. So repeat after me, say, God in heaven, I come to you now. I'm sorry that I haven't lived according to your will and your word. I haven't lived as you would have me to. But I've heard the word and I come to you today. I want to become a Christian. I want to become a part of the family of God. So I ask you, Father God, forgive me for the way that I've lived. And I ask Jesus, come into my heart and live in me. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus came to the earth and died for my sin and rose again for my justification. So I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you for saving me. Because you said, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So I'm so grateful. Thank you. My confession from this day forward is I'm saved. 
I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm free. I have a purpose. You have a vision for me. And Lord, I thank you. Thank you for saving me. And I live for you. And I'll obey you. And I thank you. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Now, if you made that confession, you said that with me, you're saved. Thank God. You're in the family of God. What a blessing. What a, what a wonderful thing. Today, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God. Praise God for you. Well, you know, now that you're in the family of God, we want you to continue on and know how to continue on. So know that Pastor Holloway has written a booklet, a book that God has given him to write to explain to you what your next steps are because he wants you to become a part of a church family. He said that he give all of us a pastor after his heart that feed us with knowledge and understanding. If you just prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family. I have a gift for you. It's a short, easy to read book, but it's powerful, life changing, and will help you on your new journey. I want to give it to you free in order for you to develop a solid foundation. So contact me and let me know you'd like to receive it. You can request it by calling our pastoral support number or using the postal address. That information should be on your screen. I thank you for taking this first step toward your new life. All right, praise the Lord. I hope you got that information. And you go on and call us. Uh, Call that number or either write us and, and receive that book. Let them know that I prayed the prayer with the sister. <laughs> or I prayed the prayer to become a Christian. And I want the book that Pastor Holloway said I can have to help, help me to continue on this journey of the Lord. Continue on this highway of holiness, this highway of Christianity. So God bless you. We thank God for you. Thank God that you're in the family now. And you know part of that packet is... Part salvation is a whole packet. You're not only sa saving where your name is in heaven, you're going to heaven, but going to heaven. But you know it means that you uh, have a right to prosperity, the peace of God, and deliverance, and and uh, and uh, financial blessings. You know, God is an awesome God. He's about the whole man. So we want you to get that book. We want you to continue on, and you're going to become a part of the family. Amen. Well, praise God. I thank God for you all today. Thank you for uh, so glad to be able to share with you. And even though I can't see you in the natural, physically, I know you're there. I love you. Praise God for you. Pastor Holloway and I, we all just miss you all so much. And we're looking forward to the time that we are together again. You keep praying. We believe it. It'll be soon. Amen. Praise God. All right, before we go, uh, there may be some of you out there, you may be sick in your body, uh, something going on with you where you need prayer. You know, I said, Jesus, what about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil? So we want to pray with you if you need healing. Uh, we're not there physically, but you know, there's no distance in the spirit. So I'm going to put my hand up and pray for you. Whatever the sickness is, or uh, you put your hand up here, uh, as touch your device, whether you're on a tablet or whatever, just put your hand up and as, as, as touching my hand as a point of contact, and I'm going to pray for you uh, and thank God for your healing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. You said that with Jesus Christ, we are already healed. So right now, as a poor my sister and brother, as they're there, touching their device, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. We command total manifestation of healing. We curse sickness and disease, infirmity. You bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Infirmity, we bind you. And Father God, we thank you. Jesus already paid the price. So we thank you for total manifestation of healing. For my sister, for my brother, 
in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Now, you give God thanks. Praise the Lord. Because the word is true and there's no distance in the spirit. And the word says, 1 Peter 2, 24, we've already been healed. So you claim that healing, whatever was going on, if you had a sore arm, so leg, so knee, whatever, move around, shake it up, and thank God for your healing, and then uh, write us or call us or let us know about what God has done for you, because you know what? He done great things for us, and we're glad. So praise the Lord, everybody. We're glad to have been with you today, and our time is up, but we want you to know uh, that we love you, we appreciate you, and, and remember that Jesus is Lord and holiness is a lifestyle that reigns and wins in the earth. God bless you. We love you. See you next time. Give yourself a big hug. Love you.